Well, hello astronomy enthusiasts, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Ocean Lake Observatory in Wyoming. Mountains in the background, ocean lakes over there behind the trees in the sun, unfortunately. Hard to see this morning. Um, anyway, I'm out here in Wyoming. Came out just for a few days, unfortunately. Can't stay for long to winterize the place because it's mid-October. And it's going to get below freezing soon, so we don't want the pipes to burst and all that. So I've got to winterize the place. But while I'm here, of course, I'm going to be working in the observatory. And uh, last night, I did something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Let's go inside the observatory and take a look at the telescope, and I'll show you what I did. I've got a new toy, so let's go look at it. So here's the Celestron C14 telescope that came with the ranch, with the roll-off roof observatory when we bought the place. And I have a bunch of videos on rehabbing the observatory after we bought the place, about getting the roof working and how the roof works, and uh, painting the place and other maintenance and whatnot, doing astrophotography out here. I'll put a link to the entire playlist on the upper right, and you can check that out if you're interested. But uh, what's my new uh, what's my new accessory? Well, you notice I used to have I used to have Moto Focus and my digital camera on the back of the telescope. It's not there anymore. Let's go look at the front of the telescope, the business end, so to speak. Oh, look at that! What do we got going on here? Yes, we have the Star Zona Hyperstar um, accessory attached to the telescope in place of the secondary mirror. Yes. And then there's my astro camera in front of it. And what does this do for us? Well, this turns this C14 into an F2 instrument. Yes, F2. Very wide field now. Uh, very, very bright images. Very short exposures needed. Oh, my goodness. So I just got this thing all installed last night, okay? Okay. And I did some test images last night, and they about blew me away. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the better ones I got last night right now. This first image is a stack of 40 30-second subframes of the Andromeda galaxy. I think it's a little burned out in uh, the center of the galaxies. And this is a problem I had. Um, the hyperstar system is just so fast at F2 that it's not hard to overexpose your, your subframes. So I found this out especially later with uh, M33. In spite of the, the, the burn-in in the center of the galaxies, I could see a whole lot of detail in Andromeda. I mean, there's all kinds of detail in the dust lanes and dark nebula, and also the, the OB associations. I swear I can see individual stars in the galaxy in the OB associations in the original image. Okay, this next image is a stack of 40 15 second subframes of the Dumbbell Nebula. Um, this one might have actually done better with 30 second subframes. I'm not sure. I was hoping to pick up some more of the faint nebulosity around the main bright part of the nebula, even if that meant overexposing the nebula itself. I'll have to revisit this object in the future and see if I can pick up some of that faint outer nebulosity. But, uh, yeah, on the whole, this turned out pretty well. Not a bad dumbbell nebula photo. And then here we have uh, the Western Veil Nebula, and this is a stack of 60 30-second subframes. We're back to 30 seconds on the subframes because I knew this was a much dimmer object. I wasn't too worried about um, overexposing it. And I'll tell you what, this is by far the best um, image I've ever taken of the Western Veil. This is an object I have photographed many, many times over the years with lots of different instruments, and I have never seen this level of detail before. This is just amazing. Um, this is a really great shot, and I wanted to do, on the next night, um, another image of the Veil Nebula, the eastern part, and uh, we'll see how that comes out. So I found that <laughs> the telescope in its new configuration is actually producing such bright images that some stuff was overexposed, even with like 30-second uh, subframes. So I'm going to have to redo some of that. Like M33, I found was just so overexposed at 30 seconds. But uh, yeah, so I got one more night here. 
So tonight I'll get the roof opened up and uh, it's supposed to be a nice night. So tonight I'll get the roof opened up and we'll do some more images. I'll redo M33 and I'll do some other stuff I've been wanting to do like the fireworks galaxy and um, let's see I did, uh, I did the Western Veil last night. I'll do the Eastern Veil tonight and uh, you know some other stuff and uh, we'll see how it all comes out but I'm just so impressed with this Hyperstar um, unit that's on here. Now, uh, if you have uh, a, a Celestron telescope that's hyperstar ready, or as, as Celestron calls it, uh, fast star ready, I, I couldn't, couldn't recommend one of these units more. I mean, it's, it's going to change your life. Definitely going to change your life and make astrophotography a whole lot more fun and productive for you, I think. So, uh, yeah, look into it. Um, compared to what you paid for the telescope, they're probably not that expensive, okay? So, uh, all right, so we just got to wait for sunset to come, and uh, I'll roll up on the roof, and uh, we'll uh, see what we can see tonight. So on my second night of using Hyperstar, the first thing I did was re-image M33, which I did on the first night, but I was not at all happy with. It really seemed overexposed and washed out with 30 second subframes which surprised me i thought that uh, andromeda was a bit washed out but m33 is not as bright as andromeda but it was really washed out the detail was not there so i redid it with 15 second subframes and i'm a lot happier with it um it it, it looks pretty good to me anyway i think it's by, by far my best image ever of m33 so this image of M33 was done with uh, 80 15 second subframes and I think it turned out a whole lot better. All right, next up from the second night with the Hyperstar is uh, the Fireworks Galaxy, NGC 6946. Um, it's kind of an overlooked galaxy because uh, it's sort of embedded in the Milky Way. We're looking through the Milky Way out into intergalactic space at it. So a lot of people don't notice it there. Um, it's uh it's 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 a cool galaxy it's fairly bright it's got a lot of detail in it and it gets its name the fireworks galaxy because of all the supernovas that have popped off in it they're kind of popping off like fireworks um also in the same frame is open cluster ngc 6939 and if you look closely there's some random milky way nebulosity in there too so this is a pretty good image i like it a lot there were 40 30 second subframes for this image of the fireworks galaxy and here we have um, Galaxy NGC 7331, and it's retinue of, of uh, little galaxies around it. I think a lot of them are actually distant background galaxies. They're not actually, like, orbiting it. Um, but uh, we have uh, the Deer Lick group um, above and a little to the right of 7331. And then far down below and to the left, we have uh, Stefan's Quintet. Yeah, there's a fair amount of detail here, uh, even considering the low power uh, that I'm running with the Hyperstar. Um, only about 741 millimeters of, of focal length there in a 14-inch telescope. Imagine that. Um, but there's still a fair amount of detail here. There's a fair amount of detail in the spiral structure on 7331. You can see tidal arms coming out on uh, some of the galaxies in Stefan's Quintet. And uh, yeah, it's a cool image. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, 70 uh, 30 second subframes went into making this image. Next up is the Eastern Veil. And, you know, I was so happy with the way the Western Veil image turned out from the night before. I had to do the um, Eastern Veil. So, uh, wow. That's all I've got to say pretty much is wow. Just look at all that nebulosity, all that detail. Look at the starry background. You can tell we're in the in the thick of the Milky Way there. Uh, this is this is just an amazing image. I, I've never seen anything like it come out of anything I've done before. So this this is starting to look like something Hubble would do. Yeah, maybe not quite that good, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Give me another year or two. Um, for this image of the Eastern Veil, there were 40 30-second subframes. Well, that was a pretty productive second night with the uh, telescope. And I am so sad that this is my last day out here. i got to leave. It's going to be another nice night. The mood's not going to set until an hour later than last night. So I'd have to be up pretty late to start imaging. But, uh, oh, I am so tempted to stay another night, but I just can't do it. 
I've got a long drive ahead of me. And, uh, whoa, but man, that, that Hyperstar unit is nice. Making some nice images, making them quick. You know, 30 second subframe, 15 second subframes. Um, I, I don't think I even did a minute on anything. So, uh, wow, that, that F2 is fast. So, yeah, I'm out here this morning. I'm getting everything all battened down and wrapped up. The, the roof's all tightened down good. I've got tarp over the telescope. I can't get the, uh, I can't get the cap on the front anymore with the Hyperstar unit on it. So I've, uh, got a trash bag over the front of the telescope to keep the, uh, corrector plate from getting dustier. We'll see how well that works. And, uh, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back out here just as soon as I can after the, uh, snow melts. And, uh, back in the, uh, Ocean Lake Observatory over here, making lots more pretty pictures. We'll have a whole different sky in six months. So, lots of other stuff to image. Well, I hope you found this uh, quick tour of the Ocean Lake Observatory and uh, showing off my new Hyperstar unit. Interesting, educational, informative, inspirational. Get one! You won't regret it. Give the video a like. Give it a thumbs up if so. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye!